Welcome back to the boat sheet. Over the next couple of videos we're going to be looking at choosing and affording a boat. We're going to start with the obvious thing which is choosing the right boat in the first place. One obvious question is sail or power but this is just one among many. What purchase price can you afford? How many cabins do you need and how many cabins do you want? What hull configuration do you prefer? What hull configuration do you need for where you're going to sail? What annual costs can you afford? What size of boat do you want? What size of boat do you actually need? And do you need an engine or engines? It's amazing how many boaters have never actually asked these questions. So we're going to look at that in this video. Most people's first question about boating is sail or power. But I would argue that that's not the best first question. I would start by asking what you're going to do with the boat. For example, are you going to race? Are you going to go weekending? Or fishing? Or are you going to be doing day trips? Or long-term cruising? Um, holiday cruising? Or just socialising? And sure, some of these things are suited to both sail and power, but some are better suited to one than the other. Power on the left and sail on the right. We can then go through each activity that you might want to do and see where it fits. So for example, racing. Depends on what you're going to race, but you can power boat race or you can sail race. So we'd have to put that in the middle. Weekending, well again, both boats are pretty well suited to weekending. Fishing on the other hand, you're much better off with a power boat. You can get to and from the fishing site more quickly and there's less equipment in the way while you're fishing. Day trips, yep, pretty much the same for both. Long-term cruising, better suited to sailing in my view, but it can be done on both. Holiday cruising, again, both. And socialising, again, easily both of them. But it's not even this simple. There are other aspects. For example, is your boating going to be coastal? Or are you going to be on an inland lake? Or even inland waterways? Are your trips likely to take you further afield? Do you live nearby where the boat is or have you got a long journey to get to it? If you live further away that makes a big difference to how you use your boat. For coastal sailing pretty much either one will do, for local lakes either will do, but for inland waterways definitely powerboat. Going further afield I would always favour, favour a sailboat for cost reasons. If you live nearby both works but if you live further away a powerboat's better because after a long drive you want to get to where you're going more quickly. What do you want to get out of your boating? Do you want speed, in which case a powerboat? Or do you want peace, in which case definitely sailing? If you want physical exercise, again sailing. And if you want to get close to nature and do some wildlife spotting, definitely a sailboat is better. Your life circumstances at any given time will dictate which of these are important to you. So all we need to do is to list the ones that matter and see where that puts us. In this example, clearly a powerboat will be more suitable. This was why I changed from sail to power when I lived in Oxfordshire and was boating on the Solent. This is why so many people like sailing and powerboating. If your life changes and your needs and preferences change, then you'll end up changing boat type. So here, having moved closer to the coast, you might say, OK, different life, different needs. I'll go from power back to sail. The size of boat is usually determined by how much space you need on board. In other words, how many people are going to be on board and for how long. But it also has other effects, particularly if you buy a displacement hull. So with a displacement hull, that is a non-planing hull, the waterline length determines the hull speed, which is the maximum practical speed for normal purposes. It's only an approximation, but approximately 1.34 times the square root of the waterline length in feet gives you the hull speed. So if you have a displacement hull that is five meters long at the waterline, that will be able to maintain a speed of approximately five knots. If you want to go faster than five knots, you'll need to have a bigger boat. If you want to go up to seven knots, you need about eight or nine meters, eight knots, about 12 meters and so on. Again, it's very much an approximation and that also depends on hull configuration. The next question is, what's your mode POB? 
What I mean by mode is how many people are most commonly going to be on it. So the more people you need on board, the bigger the boat. Here we can see with two of you, five meters is fine. Two plus two, 10 meters. Four of you, you'd need 12 meters. Six of you, 15 meters and so on. Now, obviously you can get more on board. For example, for a weekend, you can certainly get four on board and accommodate them comfortably on an eight meter boat and six on board on an 11 meter boat is no problem for a short time. And again, these numbers are very approximate and depend on the individual boat. And for day cruising, then obviously you can get more on board on a smaller boat, but don't expect everybody to be comfortable. The reason it's worth looking at this is that most of us make the mistake of buying a boat based on how many people might be on board and that really costs a lot of money. The trick is to buy the smallest boat that meets your needs. For any given range of power boats or sailing yachts, if you plot waterline length against price, you get a parabolic curve. So it goes up exponentially with waterline length. Plotting the numbers of people against the lengths that we looked at in the last question shows just how expensive it can be to plan on a boat that meets the needs of people who are normally not going to be there. Now this plot was for new boats, but the shape of the curve is the same even for used boats. And that brings us to the next important question. Do you need a new boat or a used boat? And there are various factors which affect this decision too. If it's clear that from what you need your boat to give you, you can't afford a new one, then clearly you're going to be looking at a used boat because they're cheaper. Not only that, but when you buy a new boat, you have to buy all kinds of extras, tenders, engines, lines, fenders, fire safety equipment. These tend to be thrown in when you buy a used boat. On the other hand, unless you're very brave, you'll need a survey for a used boat and that costs money. Not only that, but you'll have to have any repairs done that the survey highlights. Both of these tend to lead to choosing a new boat to avoid these costs. Maintenance and replacement are also cheaper on a new boat because for the first few years at least, there's much less to replace. On the other hand, a new boat depreciates more and so for depreciation, you're going to be looking at a used boat which will depreciate less in a given year. Another common mistake is to look at what you can afford to buy a boat without thinking of what you need to maintain it. My experience has shown that it's cost me about 5% of my purchase price to properly maintain my boat in the water. For cheaper second-hand boats, this can rise to 10% because the proportion of mooring fees or storage is higher. This brings us to the all important questions. How do I find a boat to match my funds? Or how do I find the funds to match the boat I need? Or is there something else I can do? That will be the subject of the next video. If you find these videos useful or enjoyable, you can help us out. Please subscribe. It makes a massive difference to how the algorithm works. Please hit like, that it helps us even more. And hit that bell icon if you want to be notified next time we put a video up. See you again soon, back on The Boat Sheet.